In this Tyrannus quick tip, we're going to be setting up our Tyrannus radio to work with something called FPV Freerider. Now, FPV Freerider is actually a great little bit of software that you can run on your PC, on an Apple device, or even Linux, and it kind of provides a 3D view, and you can either fly the craft uh, line of sight or you can fly it as though you're looking through your FPV goggles. So for those of you that are looking to have a go with FPV and see what it feels like, it gives you a very realistic feeling. I've actually been playing with it this morning with the Tyrannus, and uh, it actually does feel very similar to when you're flying real FPV. What we're going to do in this video is actually set up the Tyrannus radio to work with FPV Freerider so that you can get it working where you are. This has been asked for by a couple of subscribers, so this is for you. Also, I'd like to send a big shout out to the team that's written FPV Freerider for letting me get my hands on the application so that we can make this video. So the first thing we'll do is just talk about the bits on the website and then we'll jump onto the Tyrannus radio and we'll set up a model just for FPV Freerider so it works perfectly and then finally I'll show you it working. Now obviously we're running on my little baby netbook, the graphics on the netbook are not fantastic but it'll show you it working. If you want to see the graphics have a look on this web page here. If you google FPV Freerider you'll find this page at the top and in here we have the user manual that tells you how to use everything. There's also a nice manual here that sh tells you how to do the Toronto setup. But as a couple of people have asked me to show you how it's done, we're going to go through that. And then at the bottom, there's all of the different options and there's the purchase price. So you can actually get it for OSX Linux or Windows. So once you've downloaded it, the way it looks, it comes as a zip file. If you open the zip file, then there's FPV Freerider and its data. I've extracted those into a folder on the desktop. So now I'm ready to set everything up. So the first thing we'll do then is let's jump on the Tyrannus and we'll actually set up the model so that it's ready so we can plug it into the computer and get it working. So here's our Tyrannus with the model that I've already made that I've been using on the application with no problems. So we're going to recreate this model and I'll take you through each of the individual steps. There's a couple of things that we have to do just to make sure it all works, but once you've seen it, it's relatively straightforward. So the first thing we're going to do is we're going to select a new model memory. We're going to press and hold enter and say create model. Then we're going to select the multi-rotor setting. And we're just going to select all of the defaults by going through page. And at the end, we're going to hit enter for a long press. And there we have our new model. So we need to set things up. We're going to go and um, call it something that we'll remember. So we'll call it um, Freerider, so I can remember <laughs> that it's different from the one I've already done. Long press for a capital letter. Okay, uh, I've also created a little image for this. If you haven't seen my other video on how to create custom model images, then you can go and watch that. I'll put a link in the description. We'll just go down and we'll select that one. There we are. The other thing it's worthwhile doing is actually going right to the bottom and actually turning off both of the transmitters. So at the moment we have the external radio frequency transmitter turned off. I'm going to turn off the internal one as well. No point having the antenna running when we're going to use this on a USB connection. Okay, so now we've done that. Next thing we need to do then is run through until we get to the inputs. So there's a couple of things we need to do on each of the inputs to make them work properly. We need to change it. So at the moment, if I press and hold enter and edit the throttle channel, you can see it goes from minus 100 to plus 100. And to make it work with Freerider, we need to change that. So the first thing we need to do is reduce the weights from 100 down to 50. And then we also need to change the offset to 50 so that it goes from the middle channel value to the top. And you can see as I'm changing this, the value and the display on the right hand side is showing you what's happening. Okay, there we go. 
also worthwhile um, setting up Expo. We're not going to do Expo for the throttle, of course, but if we come back out of there, we're going to go and set the same for aileron. So we'll edit, go down, reduce the weight to 50, increase the offset to 50, and I would then recommend it, putting some Expo on here. So I'm going to put a nice healthy Expo of 25. And I'm going to do the same to Elevator. So reduce the weight, increase the offset, put a bit of positive Expo on to make it easier to fly. And we're also going to do the last one, the rudder. Same thing. Probably going to put slightly less expo on it, though. Press and hold enter to edit. Go down. Reduce the weight. And increase the offset. Bit of positive expo. I'll just put like 15 on the rudder. Don't want as much. Okay. So there we have the model set ready to rock and roll. So each of them has 50. There's a little bit of exponential on the aileron elevator, a little bit on the rudder. And if we actually look at one of these channels, then you can see that the controls move from the middle position to the full top. It's still going to give us full travel movement, but this is the way it needs to be set up for Freerider to be happy. Okay, now we've done that then. We're ready. So if we come out of that, there's our Freerider model ready to go. Now we're going to need to plug this into the USB cable at the back and then to plug the USB cable into the computer. If it's the first time you've ever plugged in the Tyrannus to your computer in this way then what will happen it'll come up and install a new device driver and then the Tyrannus will appear in control panel as a computer joystick. So let's go back on the netbook have a quick look at that show then how you configure the last bits in Freerider and show you very quickly it all working. So back to the netbook. So here we are on the netbook and I have control panel devices and printers open so we can see what we've got currently connected. So what we'll do is we'll turn our radio on. Welcome to Tyrannus. Once the radio is ready then what we'll do is we will plug our USB cable into the USB port at the back. Now, what will happen is on the computer, we can see now that we have the FR Sky Tyrannus joystick. Now, as I said before, that this is the first time you've installed it, it will install a device driver, but now we can use it as a joystick on the computer. Very expensive joystick, but a joystick nevertheless. If we right click on the FR Sky Tyrannus joystick and put in game controller settings, click on properties, then here as we move the controls around you can see bits and pieces moving on the computer. Now we don't need to worry about the fact that it doesn't appear to be in the right place because FPV Freerider is going to ask us which channel is being used for what. But now we can see that working on the computer, we're confident that we're ready for the next step. So we'll close all that. And then what we'll do is we'll start FPV Freerider and do the last little bit of setup. So a couple of things. Graphics quality here is on the left. If you just click it, it'll actually change. I'm going to keep it as really, really simple. Um, I'm going to click the worst. It's going to look horrible and it is not a representation of how nice the graphics can be on Freerider, but it does mean that it'll run on the netbook. Um, we need to make sure that the input is USB controller. You can either have it as touchscreen controls, a keyboard, or USB controller, which is what the Tyrannus is appearing as. We need throttle zero at bottom set, and having a dead zone um, is useful as well, it means that the sticks in the middle have like a little bit of play before they start to be accessed. Now if we click on calibrate controller it shows the screen. Now we could be using an Xbox 360 or any kind of joystick on the model to do this but down here below 
the illustration of the USB controller, you can see all these little dots. And these little dots are actually the channels in their position. So at the moment, it's asking us to move the channel to the left. So let me just insert the radio again and show you what it's doing. So as I move the channel to the left, can you see that little indicators moving on the screen? If I go all the way across and then click OK, it's now knows that that is my yaw control. It's going to ask me for the throttle and again you can see the throttle moving here so we're going to put it right to the top and we're going to click OK. Now it knows that that's the throttle. So yaw moves, throttle moves. It's going to ask me to move the left hand stick all the way to the left. Click OK. Now it knows that that's roll and the right hand stick to the top and click OK and now it knows it's pitch. So that is the radio set up, done. So if you want to actually fly, we then just pick one of these settings. Again, I would recommend using a much better computer to actually run Freerider on than the one that we're using here, but we're gonna have the worst graphics. It's gonna look horrible, but it'll kind of work. And it's gonna be a bit of a laugh here, trying to film, fly, and watch what I'm doing at the same time. But let's give it a go. So we're gonna click on Meadow. We can have different camera settings, so we can either be looking at the camera as though it's a line of sight view, or we can actually fly FPV. We'll fly FPV, so let's fire up the throttle. Whoop. Put the nose down, here we go. So as you can see, it's a pretty good approximation. Now the graphics, of course, absolutely horrible, and that's, more, that's my netbook's fault, not um, FPV. Oh, missed that one completely, and land it. But hopefully that gives you an idea now of what you need to do to set up the Tyrannus radio to work with Freerider. Thank you for taking the time to watch that video. There are lots of other videos on the channel and they're carefully ordered into playlists. So you may find that there are other videos on this same subject that you can go and watch. So I would recommend going into the playlist area of Painless360 YouTube channel and looking around and seeing what there is. You never know what you might find. Thanks for watching. Please like, subscribe and happy flying.